The Complete History of Angels, Cherubims, Seraphims, Watchers, and Lucifer. For most people, angels are fascinating beings. The reason is simple. We know so little about them. Even though they play important roles in our lives, there is so much we do not know. References to angels are everywhere in popular culture. Books, movies, stories, paintings, and other artistic renditions. They all capture the roles of angels in our lives. But what does the Bible say about angels? What is their origin? Why do angels exist? Do angels die? Are there good and bad angels? What are the categories of angels out there? Who is the strongest angel and why does it matter? In this episode, we are going to address these questions and more. If you watch until the end, you will learn how to know if you have personal angel and what to do about it. However, before we continue, take a moment to support this work by subscribing to this channel and liking this video. Share this video with as many people as possible. Check out our channel for more videos that deals with important issues in the Bible and Christianity. Now, let's get started. Angels play important role Christian theology. They serve as a testament to the power and majesty of the Almighty God. These spiritual beings, created by God, function as messengers and executors of His will. They bridge the celestial and the earthly realms. Their presence is carefully woven in biblical narratives, from the Genesis accounts of creation to the prophetic visions of Revelation. The history of the Bible and indeed humanity cannot be told without the roles of angels. Angels are depicted as guardians, guides, and bearers of God's messages. Their appearances signify moments of great importance and divine intervention in human affairs. Beyond mere messengers, angels also serve in worship and praise of God. They exemplify the direct connection between heaven and earth. The Bible is very clear on the roles of angels. Unfortunately, the little people know of angels they learn from movies, not from the Bible. Popular culture and misconceptions often make it difficult for people to understand the true biblical meaning of angels. In some portrayals, angels are shown as humans with wings or former humans who have earned wings in the afterlife. While this is useful for differentiating them from human beings, it is important that you know that the Bible does not say that angels have wings. Instead of the commonly imagined wings and harps, the Bible describes angels with wheels, multiple eyes, and various faces. However, their divine role remains consistent. They are divine ministering spirits. The Bible presents them as distinct beings created by God, each with specific roles and purposes within the divine plan. So where do angels come from? What is the origin of angels? The origins and nature of angels are rooted in the teachings of the Bible. It tells us the origin and nature of their creation and existence. Scriptures such as Job 38, 4-7 reveal that angels were witnesses to the earth's creation. It says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you know so much. Who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations, and who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? Job 38 verses 4 to 7. What does this mean? It means the existence of angels predates that of the world and humanity. They were here at the beginning of creation. Nehemiah 9-6 acknowledges the vastness of God's creation, including the heavens and the heavenly hosts, indicating angels are part of the divine order established by God. Colossians 1-16 further clarifies that all things, visible and invisible, including thrones, powers, rulers or authorities, were created through and for Christ, including the celestial beings we know as angels. This means that angels are also subject to the authority of Jesus. So what is the origin of angels? As spiritual beings, they were created by God before the foundation of the earth. This pre-existence positions them as witnesses to God's creative power and establishes their primary role as servants and messengers of the divine will. 
Angels are inherently spiritual entities, distinct from the physical creation that characterizes the human world. Unlike humans, who are a blend of the physical and the spiritual, angels are purely spiritual. This allows them to serve God across both the heavens and the earth. This spiritual nature grants them abilities beyond human capacities. It is why they can move between realms and perform tasks commanded by God with speed and efficiency. The other way that angels are different form human is mortality. While humans die because of sin, angels do not experience physical death. Therefore, they are not subject to salvation history in the same way humans are. Only humans receive the grace of salvation. This distinction is crucial for understanding the unique purpose and function of angels. Angels are powerful, but they are not all the same. There are categories of angels. The Bible alludes to a structured hierarchy and various classes of angels, though it does not lay out a detailed classification. Let's hear how Paul speaks of this. He says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6 verse 12 Paul in this passage speaks of principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places, hinting at different ranks within the spiritual realm. In Colossians 1.16, he refers to thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. This further suggests a structured order. All angels are not the same or equal. There is order and a power hierarchy in the realm of angels. We learn more about this in the book of Isaiah. He says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. Isaiah 6, 1-3 In the passage, Isaiah introduces the seraphim, celestial beings that stand above the throne of God, singing praises. Then Jude clarifies things a little bit. He says, But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Jude 1, verse 9 Jude mentions the archangel Michael, indicating a special status or rank among angels. An archangel means a chief angel, one with supposed more influence, power, and control over other angels. Using biblical traditions and sources, angels are categorized into different orders or choirs. This order reflects their hierarchy and functions. 1. Seraphim Seraphim are closest to God. They are associated with purifying fire and divine worship. They take charge of the hallowed space around the throne of God. 2. Cherubim These are guardians of God's glory. They are fountain of knowledge and wisdom. Cherubim are ranked among the higher orders of angels, and as celestial attendants of God, they continually praise Him. Satan was a cherub before he rebelled and was dethroned. 3. Thrones. Thrones are considered to embody divine justice and authority. They are depicted as great wheels containing many eyes and reside in the area of the cosmos where material form begins to take shape. They chant glorias to God and remain forever in His presence. They mete out divine justice and maintain the cosmic harmony of all universal laws. 4. Dominions These choir of angels are tasked with overseeing the duties of lower angels, ensuring the cosmos remains in order. They are leader angels who assert control and take responsibility for the orderly function of God's unverse. 5. Virtues They are known for their control of the elements and their direct involvement in miracles. In addition to being the spirits of motion, they also assist in governing elements of nature, such as storms. 
They also assist with miracles, as well as encourage humans to strengthen their faith in God. 6. Powers Powers are guardians against demonic forces, maintaining balance and order. They are angels who have power over evil forces. These angels keep demons, keep them from doing harm. Powers also oversee the power which human beings, such as kings, have been given in the world. They provide a balance between the powers of human rulers and ordinary people. 7. Principalities These level of angels are responsible for the protection and guidance of nations and leaders. These angels are assigned especially to guide and protect nations or groups of peoples and institutions such as the church. It is most likely that you have experienced the protection of a principality angel. 8. Archangels. Many people, especially Christians, are familiar with this type of angel because of the exploits of Archangel Michael, severally mentioned in the Bible. Archangels. High-ranking angels who serve as God's primary messengers to humans, they are also warrior angels who stand against the advances of Satan and his demons. 9. Angels. These are the most familiar to people. They serve as messengers and protectors. Everyone knows of an angel. Roles and functions of different types of angels. As you can see, each class or choir of angels has distinct roles and functions within the celestial hierarchy. Their duties range from worshipping God and communicating His will, to overseeing the natural world, guiding nations, delivering messages to individuals, and battling demonic entities. This structured system reflects a divine order in which each angelic being plays a part in the broader cosmic purpose. The Bible mentions several angels by name, indicating their importance and specific roles. Michael, described as an archangel, is often seen as a protector of Israel and a leader in the heavenly army against the forces of evil. Gabriel is known for delivering crucial messages from God to individuals such as the Annunciation to Mary. These specific mentions underscore the personal and active involvement of angels in God's plan for humanity. Understanding the classes and hierarchies of angels offers insight into the complex and ordered nature of the spiritual realm. Each angelic class serves a unique purpose, reflecting the diversity and magnitude of God's creation. The appearance of angels to humans started early in the Old Testament. Passages in Genesis 16, verses 7 to 12, Exodus 14, verse 19, 2 Kings 19, verse 35, and Daniel 6, verse 22, all discuss notable appearances and interventions of angels, for example, in the lives of Abraham, Jacob, and Moses. Angels in Prophetic Visions these functions of angels as messengers underscore their obedience to God's commands and their active participation in His plan for salvation history. Here are some examples. 1. Angels in the life of Abraham. Angels visited Abraham to announce the birth of Isaac and later to prevent the sacrifice of Isaac, demonstrating God's provision and guidance. 2. In the life of Jacob, Jacob's dream of a ladder to heaven with angels ascending and descending, symbolizes the connection between God and humanity, with angels as intermediaries. 3. Guidance of Moses and Israelites An angel guided Moses in the form of a burning bush and led the Israelites through the desert, showing divine leadership and protection. 4. Prophetic Visions Angels played significant roles in the visions of the prophets, such as Daniel, where they interpreted divine messages and foretold future events, illustrating God's sovereignty over history. Angels are central to many prophetic visions in the Old Testament, where they serve as interpreters of the visions or as agents of God's will within those visions. These encounters provide deeper understanding and context for God's messages, revealing the cosmic scope of divine action and the spiritual warfare behind earthly events. Angels in the Life of Jesus The New Testament highlights the crucial roles that angels played in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. From the announcement of His birth to the moments following His resurrection, 
angels were present, acting as messengers and servants of God's will. Before the conception of Jesus, the angel Gabriel announced to Mary that she would conceive and give birth to Jesus, the Son of the Most High, highlighting the angelic role in heralding the incarnation of God. Luke 1 verses 26 to 38. Then later, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, reassuring him of Mary's divine pregnancy and instructing him to name the child Jesus, emphasizing divine guidance and the fulfillment of prophecy. Matthew 1 verses 20 to 21. In preparation for his ministry and following Jesus' 40 days of temptation in the wilderness by Satan, angels came and ministered to him. Matthew 4 11. This act of service underscores the role angels in supporting the Son of God, providing care and encouragement at a critical moment in his earthly ministry. Three days after the crucifixion of Jesus, angels announced the resurrection of Jesus to the women who visited the tomb, proclaiming the victory over death and the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy regarding his resurrection. Matthew 28 verses 1 to 7. Before that, just before his arrest, an angel appeared to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane to strengthen him as he prayed, showing divine support in his moment of anguish. Luke 22, verse 43. The presence of angels in these pivotal events of Jesus' life underscores their integral role in God's redemptive plan. Angels not only serve as messengers of divine revelations, but also as active participants in the unfolding of salvation history. The Acts of the Apostles and the Epistles further illuminate the active engagement of angels in the early Christian community, demonstrating their role in guiding, protecting, and communicating God's purposes. Here are some examples. In Acts 5, 19-20, an angel of the Lord opens the prison doors and leads the apostles out, instructing them to continue their ministry. This demonstrates divine intervention in ensuring the continuation of the apostolic mission. Then, in Acts 12-6-11, vividly narrates how an angel of the Lord rescues Peter from prison on the eve of his trial, guiding him out past guards and through locked gates. This miraculous escape highlights the protective and liberating action of angels on behalf of God's servants. Angels intervene not only to free the apostles, but also to provide direction and encouragement to the early church during times of persecution and uncertainty. Hebrews 1 verse 14 describes angels as ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. This defines a broad role for angels in supporting and aiding believers, emphasizing their ongoing engagement in the spiritual well-being of the church. The actions of angels in the Acts and Epistles underscore their function as intermediaries and executors of God's will, operating within both the heavenly realm and the earthly church. Angels in the Book of Revelation The Book of Revelation, a prophetic work full of apocalyptic imagery and visions, places angels at the center of end times and eschatological events. Angels are prominently featured throughout Revelation, executing God's judgments and delivering messages to humanity. They are shown to sound the trumpets that usher in various judgments upon the earth, mark the faithful for protection, and gather the elect from the four corners of the world. The book of Revelation also describes the war in heaven and the fall of some angels. Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9 describes a cosmic battle in heaven where Michael and his angels fight against the dragon, identified as Satan, and his angels, resulting in the latter's defeat and expulsion from heaven. This passage shows the ongoing spiritual warfare and the clear distinction between faithful angels who serve God and the fallen angels who rebel against him. The book of Revelation offers a profound and complex portrayal of angels, emphasizing their power, majesty, and dedication to God's purposes. Through their involvement in the end times, angels remind believers of the cosmic scope of God's plan and the central role of the spiritual realm, the fall of angels. So far, we have discussed the great roles that angels play, but like humans, angels err too. When they do, they fall, 
The concept of the fall of angels, including the figure often identified as Lucifer, is detailed in the Bible. The books of Isaiah and Ezekiel paints a vivid picture of the reason behind the fall of Lucifer. Isaiah says, How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn! You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 15. This is a clear reference to the fall of Satan due to his pride and arrogance. Ezekiel's account is even more vivid. He says of Satan, You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Carnelian, chrysolite and emerald, topaz, onyx and jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God, you walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. Ezekiel 28 verses 13 to 17. And Jude tells what really happened to the disobedient angels who sided with Satan. He said, And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, waiting for the great day of judgment. Jude 1 verse 6. Apostle Peter reaffirmed this when he said, For God did not spare even the angels who sinned. He threw them into hell, in gloomy pits of darkness, where they are being held until the day of judgment. 2 Peter 2 verse 4. The story that these passages tells is that Lucifer, a high-ranking angel, led a rebellion against God out of pride and a desire to ascend to a position above his Creator. This rebellion resulted in Lucifer and the angels who followed him being cast out of heaven. The fall of these angels marked their transformation into demons, beings in opposition to God's will. The consequences of their rebellion are far-reaching. They introduced sin, evil, and discord into the created order. This event underlines the themes of free will and the cosmic battle between good and evil. Clearly, the fallen angels play a central role in the narrative of redemption and the struggle against sin. The terms fallen angels and demons are often used interchangeably, yet there is a slight difference in Christian theology. Fallen angels refer specifically to those celestial beings who participated in the rebellion and were cast out of heaven. Demons are beings now in active opposition to God and humanity. This distinction highlights the transition from a state of grace to one of rebellion. It helps with our understanding of evil as a perversion of the good. It serves as a caution against pride and rebellion, while also reinforcing the sovereignty of God and the ongoing battle against forces that seek to undermine His divine order and purpose. How about today? Do we still have the services of angels? The answer is yes. While some emphasize the traditional view of angels as messengers and servants of God, I believe there is more to their actions even today. They still represent the presence of God's action in the world. While their actions are often subtle, but it is there. They help guide and influence our decisions to reflect the desire and glory of God. Angels are accessible and comforting figures who offer guidance, protection, and support to believers. The popularity of angelic imagery in literature, art, and popular culture 
attests to the continued fascination with and devotion to angels. Many Christians pray to angels, seeking their intercession or assistance in times of need. I believe is misguided. The only one we should pray to is God who will dispatch angels on our behalf. Angels also serve as a reminder of the spiritual warfare and the ongoing struggle between good and evil. It reminds us to live lives of faith and dependence on Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Amen.